When you solve an absolute value inequality, you start with the inequality and then find the interval or intervals on the number line that make the inequality true. Another name for this in interval is range of values. So I started with absolute x minus 1 less than or equal to 4, and because I had less than or equal to a positive number, this was a standard less than setup with x minus 1 in the middle between negative 4 and positive 4. Adding 1 to all three sections gave us our range of values. In order for this original inequality to be true, we need negative 3 to be less than or equal to x, and x to be less than or equal to 5. A skill that's useful in real life, and real life at this point in time means SATs, ACTs, and calculus, is to work backwards and find the absolute value inequality that would make, um, give us this interval. So I want to start with negative 3 to 5, and I want to end up with x minus 1 is less than or equal to 4. What makes one interval different from another is how long the interval is and where on the number line the interval starts and ends. How long is this interval? Well, subtraction gives us distance, so if we do 5, which is larger, subtract negative 3, which is the smaller one, we end up with 5 minus minus 3 equals 8 spaces long. The best place to see where an interval is on the number line from beginning to end is from the midpoint, which is in the middle. So if I add 5 and negative 3 and divide by 2, which is the average, I get that 1 is the midpoint of this interval, and half of the interval is on one side, and half of the interval is on the other. In the interest of making it easier for you, I rewrote here the original uh, inequality that we started with and the stats we had so far. The length of the segment, 5 minus minus 3 is 8. The midpoint, 5 plus negative 3 divided by 2, the average is 1. And so from 1, half of the interval is 4 spaces long, and the other half of the interval is 4 spaces long. In order for x to be inside this interval, any x in here whether it's on this side or on this side, has to be less than four spaces from x equals one. Well, when we subtract with x over here, we're subtracting a smaller number, take away a bigger number. When we subtract over here, x is bigger, take away one is a smaller number. That's where the absolute value bars come in. Subtraction measures distance, and absolute value bars guarantee that the distance will never come out being a negative number. When we put it all together, we start by putting absolute value signs on either side to guarantee that our subtraction will always give us the positive distance. Inside, we write that x minus 1 means that the distance from x to 1 is less than 4 spaces, the equal sign because, of course, the endpoints of the interval, which are included in this problem, are exactly 4 spaces. So absolute value bars to guarantee our subtraction gives us positive distance. Subtract x from the midpoint 1 and say that it has to be less than or equal to the number of spaces we're allowed on either side of the midpoint. This method will always give you an absolute value inequality that fits. Here's another problem for you to try with a different interval. Again, as I said before in previous worksheets, thinking is like any other thing you have to practice. The more you actually concentrate and think about what just happened, the easier and easier and easier these problems become. They're all the same. You might be told the interval is from negative 7 to negative 1, or you might be given the graph from negative 7 to negative 1. In any case, if you're trying to describe this interval, and x is going to be a number in the interval, then we have to find two things. The length of the interval, which is negative 1 subtract negative 7 is 6 spaces long, and the midpoint of the interval is negative 4. If the interval is a total of six spaces long, then from negative four up to, to negative one is 
three spaces, and from negative 4 down to negative 7 is three spaces. The interval is six spaces long, the midpoint is negative 4, the distance on either side, 3, which gives us absolute value bars, x minus minus 4. Remember, you always do x subtract the midpoint. If the midpoint is negative 4, that gives us x minus minus makes a plus 4, is less than or equal to 3 spaces. Anytime you want, you can check it by actually solving the inequality the way we did before. It's a less than inequality. Put x plus 4 between negative 3 and 3, subtract 4 in all three sections, and voila, there's French again. I figured it had to come in handy at some point in time, considering I studied it for seven years. Negative 7 less than or equal x less than or equal to negative 1 was the interval we started with. Yay! If we needed to describe a number that was not inside the continuous interval, but rather outside the range of values, we would have to first analyze the section in the middle. Because the section in the middle anchors the sections on either side of it. So we're going to do the exact same analysis we did before. We're going to focus on the inside interval, finding its length, which is 5, finding its midpoint, which is negative 1.5. So the distance between any x in the inner interval and negative 1.5, which is the midpoint, is less than 2.5 spaces, which is half of 5. 2.5. 2.5, a total of 5 from negative 1.5. This gives us this inequality. If we flip the inequality from being in, which is less than or equal to, to being out, which is greater than, we end up with x plus 1.5 is greater than 2.5. I found one that was I thought might be a little bit interesting. You get to try it. Lucky you. The moon's distance from the Earth depends upon how it rotates, or that's not the right word, what's the right word? Don't you wish you could answer me? I wish you could answer me. The maximum distance is 406,740 kilometers, and the minimum distance is 356,410 kilometers. That's a range of values from 356,410 to 406,740. How would you describe that range of value, the range of distances, using an absolute value inequality? This is the one I got, and again, I'd appreciate it if you'd give it a try, hit pause, and let me know if I got it right or if I didn't get it right. You'll have plenty of opportunity to practice range of values both inner and outer in the worksheets that follow this introductory worksheet. Try them out and if you have any questions you can always ask.